Miami's downtown charter school is trending up, becoming an A-rated school near the economically depressed Overtown. Also trending up is the school's founder and charter school's USA CEO, John Hage. He's just been named Floridian of the Year by Florida Trend Magazine, mostly because his schools are making a difference in Overtown and all over Florida. We just believe that this is a place where you can, you know, every kid can learn. Every student has amazing potential, and uh, Overtown has amazing potential. So this is an opportunity to sort of show that these students can do anything. Fort Lauderdale-based CSUSA opened its first school 15 years ago and now run 48 across the nation, with more scheduled to open next year, putting Hage near the forefront of the movement and attracting statewide attention. I'm really encouraged by how much in a community like this, you will get amazing results when you give people an opportunity. Good day, this is Ed Poswoli from Trip Scott, bringing you another installation of our webcast series. Today we have with us the CEO of Charter School USA, Jonathan Hage. John has just been named Floridian of the Year by Florida Trend Magazine, and he's with us today to talk about the future of both Charter School USA and the educational reform movement. John, welcome. Thanks, Ed. John, t talk to me about this honor about being Floridian of the Year by Florida Trend. Uh, it's quite an individual honor, but uh, I think you mentioned near that it was a tribute to your whole organization. What do you mean? It is. You know, I think charter schools have come of age, and this is an opportunity for us to be uh, really all that we were planning on being all along, which is putting kids first. And it's an organization that's proud of what it's done for students across the state of Florida and now the country. Now, if there was one thing that you wanted people to know about CSUSA, I mean, would it be the 48 schools or the A-plus rating, 48 school-wide, or the number of the 40,000-plus students? What would it be? I think it's that every single student that goes to our schools matter to us. I think that the personal interaction with individual students has created this opportunity where really growth is taking place at an amazing level. So we're just focused on every single student. Talk about your business plans for expanding CSUSA. So our goal is to try to serve as many students as we can. We have uh, tens of thousands of kids already on waiting lists for our schools. Now it's focused on not just growth in Florida, but in other states. We're now in five states getting ready to open schools in seven. And, you know, charter schools really are taking the country by storm right now. Our goal is to make sure that we produce the highest performing charter schools in the country in every state that we go into. Right now you have about, you're serving about 40,000 students. Uh, what do you anticipate three years from now? So we do have a goal, right? And our goal is to serve 100,000 students in the next three years. So obviously that requires a lot of uh, focus on how do we do growth and how do we do it right. Uh, we won't grow at the expense of quality, but quality is what's driving our growth. And talk a little bit about the educational results that uh, your organizations achieve for the students that attend your schools. So we're proud, you know, in Florida for the last 15 years we've produced A schools. In fact, as a school district, if you looked at us, we would be an A school system. We're now focused on taking that same idea into other states and producing similar scores. We're also proud that we've taken some low performing schools and turned them into high performing schools. So you mentioned that you're in some states other than Florida, what are they? So we're in Georgia, Louisiana, Illinois, and Indiana today. We're also focused on new schools opening in both the Detroit market in Michigan and in North Carolina this year. Okay, and talk a little bit about, you mentioned some of the, some you take some low performing schools and now they're high-performing schools. Is any, uh, any locally? Yes, in fact, uh, the downtown Miami Charter School, which was a low-performing area in Overtown, started out its first year as an F school. Today, it's an A school. It's 95% free and reduced lunch and serves a population that really needed this educational opportunity. We're proud of what we've done there. How does that impact the community which that school serves? It's amazing. You actually see the community changing. The parental involvement, the students becoming, you know, lifetime learners and loving the fact that this is a school where they can achieve a lot. It started to revitalize the entire community. Uh, we do things on Saturday. We have Saturday school. The entire community itself is actually focused around what's happening in this school and this school is making a real difference. And talk, talk to me about what is the because charter schools, they're public schools, right? They are. They're public, but they're also independently and privately operated. And so what's the differential between a traditional public school 
and a charter school, particularly a CSUSA run charter school. Right, so at the end of the day, we focus on being accountable to parents and to the public for our results. In fact, if a charter school doesn't do a better job than the schools around it, then it usually gets shut down. So our focus is on producing better results academically for students. The other result is, is that you really want to try to change a community by having competition for all the schools in the area to do a better job. Now in Florida, do, do your charter schools receive the same funding as your traditional public school does? No, we actually do it on about two-thirds of the funding that the traditional system does. Uh, we also actually operate and build the schools for about 50 cents on the dollar. So we're trying to focus on efficient use of public dollars while trying to also get in, and getting a better academic result. Now, you're involved with the national conversation in educational reform. Talk a little bit about where you think nationally educational reform is going. So I think America has uh, started this great experiment on school choice, and now it's starting to produce some real results. What we're finding now is that there are operators, there are people who really know what they're doing, they're using research, that research is being applied in the classroom and student achievement is accelerating. There's other places where the experiment hasn't worked and quite frankly there's some schools and some examples where that has to kind of go away and we have to be willing to say those schools haven't made it, they didn't really get it job, the job done. We can't continue to let them operate and not serve kids. So that's where we're at today. I think it's actually going into a new phase, a new phase where best practices, high performing operations, people who've done it well should start to scale across the U.S. Now have you been involved with actually taking uh, management control of existing public schools and then trying to turn them around? We just started that. You know, we feel that our obligation is to focus on students in all markets, not just in charter schools. So last year we were asked by the state of Indiana to actually turn around some of their lowest performing public schools. Um, in that case, we actually went in, took the schools over, we're on the ground there, hired hundreds of new people, and are producing amazing results already. And how is that impacting those neighborhoods? It's amazing because people really thought that these schools were written off. They basically just gave up on these kids. And we went in with a brand new team with an attitude, a culture that says that we're not giving up on these kids. That students can, in fact, learn from all backgrounds, all types of economic situations if you give them the right tools and if you inspire them to learn. A lot of it just is that they never actually saw anyone that cared enough to give them a chance that really intervened in their life on a personal level. Let me bring you back to Florida, uh, Broward County, Dade County, uh, Palm Beach County. Uh, you have a number of schools throughout the Tri-County area and how are they doing? They're doing great, you know, we're focused on continuing to serve Florida first. Uh, two thirds of our schools lie here in Florida. We, this is our home. Uh, we love the state. I was born and raised here, so this is kind of home. But we also know that there's a lot of kids outside of Florida that need this uh, opportunity that we're trying to provide for folks. But Florida at the end of the day is home. We're continuing to grow here. We just opened up several schools in Palm Beach, more opening up this year. And so we see the market as one that it continues to grow in Florida. Economic activity is happening here. We hired almost 1,500 employees, of which 1,000 of those were just in Florida last year. So some of your schools in Broward, the one in Hollywood, uh, Young Circle in Hollywood, that's an A-plus school, right? It is. It's a double-A uh, school. Every year it receives an A for its elementary and its middle school. It serves a majority-minority population. It serves kids from multiple backgrounds, multiple languages, and it's an arts and science focus. And it's got quite a wait list. It does. Hundreds of students. We actually just built a brand new, bu a brand new building for that school, and it's exciting to see that building fill up literally day one. So from the southeast uh, corner of the county, let's go to the northwest corner of the county. You have a couple of schools in Coral Springs as well. We do. You know, one of our first schools was the school in Coral Springs for the city of Coral Springs. It's an old mall that was renovated into a brand new school. Uh, it's a sixth through twelfth grade school. It's one of the highest performing middle and high schools in the entire county. And we service the city there by producing high outcomes for the city, its residents, and for the neighboring cities nearby. And you have another school in Coral Springs as well, which is basically the same model, and one that just opened up in Tamarack. Right, you know, we're opening up where parents have demand, and what's happening now is that, you know, the brand is, uh, is, is known by people. People know these are quality schools. We're investing in student learning in the way that research shows that kids can learn technology, new buildings oftentimes, or even renovating old target buildings. We've done it all. And then we go into communities and build those K-8 schools. Eventually what happens is those eighth graders need a place for a high school. So then we focus on how do we create a high school for those. 
So like in Broward, North Broward Academy in, in North Lauderdale? Yeah. That's a highly successful school, majority minority? Yes, and it's been around a long time. It serves a, a large population of uh, at-risk students, uh, most of them on free and reduced lunch. Uh, yet the results we've gotten in that school are just amazing. Again, an A school year over year. New school in Cooper City? Yes, it's a brand new school. Uh, um, it's amazing. We already have a waiting list in that school one year into it, and uh, we're seeing great uh, response from the community. The bottom line is parents want academic choice. You know, they have a choice where they live, where they buy things, where they uh, do the things that they do on their own. But they oftentimes haven't had a educational choice. We're giving them that choice. Nationwide and both locally and around the state, from a transformative standpoint, um, close on where you see Charter Schools USA and the Charter School movement in the next five years. So I think the goal is really simple. At the end of the day, we want individual students to perform at a higher rate through the school environment that we produce than they otherwise would. They might have fallen through the crack, or maybe they just weren't given the kind of attention or the detailed instruction that we can provide them. So as we serve students first, then the business plan really takes care of itself. The organization grows where the need is. There's a lot of demand out there for a high performing quality operator of public schools. You really need a stimulant, something to come into the system and say, we can do a better job. Everybody must do a better job. And that's what CSUSA provides. That is our goal, and that's what we provide. And we're just proud of the kind of things we've done for students individually. Well, John, thank you very much this afternoon, and I appreciate it. Thank you, and we appreciate our partnership with Trip Scott. It's been a great partnership over the years. Really thank has. you. Thank you.